Hello, everyone. I'd like to thank everyone who's joining us. Welcome to today's CNCF webinar, Kubernetes in the context of on-premises and get edge and network edge computing with Intel. I'm Libby Schultz, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. We'd like to welcome our presenters, Amr Mokhtar, Network Software Engineer at Intel, and Prakash Kartha, Segment Director at Intel. A few housekeeping items before we get started. During the webinar, you are not able to talk as an attendee. There is a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to drop your questions in there and we'll get to as many as we can at the end. This is an official webinar of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. Please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. Basically, please be respectful of all your fellow participants and presenters. Please also note that the recording and slides will be posted later today to the CNCF webinar page at www.cncf.io slash webinars. With that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Amar and Prakash to kick off today's presentation. Thank you, Libby. Um, hello, my name is Prakash Kartha. Like uh, Libby mentioned, we are gonna be uh, talking to today about openness or open network edge services software, enabling high performance edge for telco and enterprise. Um, I'm with Intel's uh, network platforms group where I'm a segment director for edge and with me is Amar. Hello everyone. Uh, so my name is Amar Mukhtar and uh, I'm a software engineer with the, uh, with Intel. I'm currently an active contributor to the Openness project, and I previously worked in other projects uh, such as uh, DBDK and uh, Plexran. Okay, so let's uh, talk to the agenda. Uh, we'll first start with some of the opportunities and challenges uh, that we believe will exist uh, as you deploy Edge in a telco environment. Uh, we'll introduce uh, you to the project called OpenNest um, and then walk through the architecture, various deployment scenarios and how we can get started. And then we'll have some uh, wrap up uh, thoughts and then we'll go into Q&A. Okay, so first let's talk about uh, our vision for the edge and we see the edge um, as, a, as a distributed uh, you know, across different locations. So from a distribution perspective, there's what we call the on-premise edge, which typically sits, you know, in an enterprise, could be private wireless, uh, could be in an IoT type scenario. And then we have what's known as the network edge or what we call the network edge, which we distribute along uh, the axis, which would be like a base station or the near edge, which would be where, you know, a, uh, a 5G, uh, a user plane might reside or a regional data center where you may have different types of uh, applications. Now, one of the um, opportunities that we see here is that uh, as a telco, uh, if you're looking at edge across these different locations, whether it's on premise or the network edge, uh, there is a tremendous opportunity to reduce your total cost of ownership. Uh, and, and build a consistent environment uh, for the edge. And this consistent environment based on cloud native platform approaches across all these edge locations. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's quite you know, easy to imagine why that would be the case because if you try to you know, build uh, edge, you know, cloud native platforms for different edge locations, you're gonna to start to drive up your cost, your not just to build a platform, but also to manage an ecosystem, deliver services. So as a telco, you know, telcos are always looking for ways to, uh, you know, build cost efficient, you know, reusable, scalable type platforms. So this we believe is a huge opportunity to, you know, to enable consistent cloud native platform approaches for all of these different edge locations. So as we move to the next slide, we'll, we'll understand what are some of the challenges with addressing these, um, uh, this particular opportunity to reduce TCO. So uh, as you can imagine here, each of these locations are gonna look quite different from an edge perspective. Uh, the platforms are gonna look very different. For instance, if you are 
you know, building a platform for an on-premise type deployment, uh, let's say a private wireless type deployment, you are out in the field, your, you know, your, 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 your environment is going to be extremely constrained. Whereas if you move to a access edge, you're going to have a little bit more flexibility, but you're still pretty much, you know, constrained by what you can do. And as you're going deeper into the network is going to start looking more and more like a data center. So, um, so the first challenge you're going to have is how do you deliver platform consistency and scalability across all of these diverse edge locations, which have different requirements. That's your number one challenge. The next thing you would come across is, you know, assuming this is going to be a fully cloud native um, framework that you're using across the board, we still see that cloud native, pure cloud native is still quite, uh, not quite ready for the edge, right? There are a lot of stringent KPIs that need to be supported for the edge, whether it's a uh, latency or whether it's determinism and uh, the ability to deal with a lot of the underlying network complexity around multi-access, right? So in a lot of these scenarios, um, you know, you, you may have 5G or LTE or you may have Wi-Fi. The access networks are gonna be quite diverse and uh, your networking topologies may be quite diverse. For all of these reasons, you know, these cloud native frameworks that we all know still need to be optimized quite a bit. That's going to be our second challenge. The third challenge is going to be that the standards haven't quite caught up, but they're they are almost there, right? From a 3GPP perspective, we're really starting to see more edge specific standards getting developed. So as you are kind of in this brownfield type environment where you already have a network and you're bringing on new capabilities, you're gonna to have to figure out how as a telco, how to bring on some of these standards based deployments. So with that, uh, going into the next slide, we will talk about uh, how we are trying to address some of these challenges with this project called Openness. So Openness stands for Open Network Edge Services Software. It is a, a CNCF certified Kubernetes solution. Um, Openness is a edge computing software toolkit that enables highly optimized, secure, and performant edge platforms to onboard and manage applications and network functions with cloud-like agility across any type of network. So each of these uh, uh, each of these uh, statements is quite important. So the first point is extremely optimized for some of these uh, network workloads. It's secure and it's performant. Um, so this, uh, this solution is extremely modular. So it's, it's built on a concept of uh, building blocks. And these building blocks are built on top of a uh, cloud native foundation. So all the key cloud native projects form the basic framework for openness, so including Kubernetes, Service Mesh, uh, the telemetry projects, Helm, uh, operator framework. These are all the foundational elements. And then openness builds on top specific capabilities like multi-access networking, uh, multi-cluster orchestration, uh, edge of air service mesh, confidential computing, a van overlay, and so on and so forth. Now, there are uh, a few use cases that we target as the top use cases, starting with uh, a 5G um, access edge, including a 5G RAN, virtualized RAN, uh, you know, enabled on a cloud native environment. That is uh, one of the key use cases. So you can run basically a 5G base station on top of this platform. Uh, we have support for uh, a 5G a distributed uh, user plane function, uh, support for um, a SD WAN uh, and various MEC applications or multi uh, edge computing, multi access edge computing uh, applications such as AI, inferencing, and media. So these are all the top use cases that are enabled on this platform. From a key feature standpoint, uh, the number one capability that we address is you know, ensuring that the edge KPIs are met, including throughput, determinism, quality of service, latency, and so on. This solution is intended to run in different uh, environments, including different cloud environments, different access environments, so as multi-access, as multi-cloud. Um, and it's delivered uh, via different types of reference architectures. So these reference architectures are 
um, you know, uh, different um, uh, different combinations of these building blocks put together to service certain use cases. And this is quite uh, interesting because, you know, you can choose a reference architecture depending on what type of platform you're trying to build, whether you're trying to build a, a, a base station versus a near edge platform versus an on-premise platform. And of course, we, we, we address all the industry standards like 3GPP, um, ORAN, etc., and some of the, you know, more of the, you know, uh, de facto standards that CNCF has been, uh, uh, has been addressing. Um, with that, I'm going to pass this to uh, uh, Amar, who is going to go over the architecture in a lot more detail. Uh, thanks, Prakash. Um, so uh, now let's uh, take a closer look uh, at the uh, open uh, network edge services software architecture and its uh, building blocks. Um, as we look ahead towards a, a cloud-like 5G network, we are delivering the Open Network Edge Services software. Uh, we call it OpenNest for short. The OpenNest is an open and uh, cloud-native architecture, um, as Prakash um, uh, introduced, that is transforming the telco uh, network edge and thereby uh, promoting it to, uh, to be managed and provisioned in a cloud-like agility. It also enables uh, building highly optimized and performant platforms uh, that orchestrates workloads, uh, network functions, and hardware resources while uh, preserving the uh, separation of the control and data plane. Um, so following the uh, Kubernetes uh, nature of doing things, uh, the openness builds uh, uh, edge clusters that are composed of one or more uh, high, uh, high availability nodes that belong to the control plane uh, and um, multiple uh, worker nodes, uh, which we call them uh, edge nodes. So these uh, edge nodes are the ones that are uh, actually positioned at remote sites and close to the uh, source of events. The controller uh, manages and onboards uh, edge applications uh, uh, and services um, and uh, network fun functions. Uh, efficiently um, according to the edge nodes uh, features and their uh, platform cap uh, capabilities. The controller uh, also provisions uh, acceleration resources to the workloads and provides um, highly optimized container networking for their data plane um, using technologies such as uh, open vSwitching, uh, e eBBF and uh, PCIe SRIO vCNI. All the uh, Kubernetes capabilities are still included in the openness architecture, uh, like the node uh, feature discovery, uh, telemetry and telemetry hour scheduling, uh, container runtime and virtualization infrastructure, and hardware acceleration discovery and provisioning and um, management. So uh, uh, as we are doing uh, in openness, um, uh, what we are doing, doing in openness is that uh, we are picking up the latest Kubernetes releases uh, and uh, uh, other CNCF projects. Then we build on top of them various extensions at different levels uh, as, uh, for the purpose of promoting uh, network edge deployments. So at the platform level, uh, we are integrating the uh, bare metal uh, container components for resource-based deployments, such as uh, node feature discovery and resource management daemon, NUMA aware scheduling and CPU manager. Uh, uh, and uh, we are also extending the telemetry pipeline that is based on CollectD, uh, C Advisor, Prometheus and Grafana. And uh, topping, uh, them, uh, uh, topping them up uh, with dedicated metrics uh, exporters for accelerators that we are enabling for uh, edge, deployment, uh, edge deployments with openness. We are uh, also um, enhancing uh, and integrating the hardware acceleration device plugins for PGA based uh, forward error correction and uh, Intel Movidius uh, uh, vision processing units. Also, uh, apart from the core DNS that is part of the vanilla uh, Kubernetes bring up, we are uh, provisioning uh, what we call the Edge DNS service. The Edge DNS service uh, provides a domain name resolution for uh, the external devices that are 
attempting to uh, discover uh, and consume uh, business to consumer software as a service that are hosted by the edge cluster and um, and open for public consumption some or all of these services could be uh, monetized by the service provider and uh, only allowed for uh, premium uh, users uh, the uh, the term deterministic cloud native is another crucial ca capability um, uh, when deploying cloud native radio uh, access network functions. So the uh, the radio access network functions uh, have very stringent uh, requirements for uh, latency and timeliness of their uh, of the messaging at the radio link. And for that, we are uh, providing a recipe with the best known platform configurations and real time characteristics that uh, will achieve uh, optimal performance on the general uh, purpose compute. Uh, at the at application level, we are uh, delivering uh, video analytics services that are available through a uh, service mesh. Uh, these services allow third party application vendors to quickly build optimized video inferencing pipelines uh, without being ex experts in the media processing domain. We are uh, also defining uh, reference edge network functions for uh, native integration with the public telco uh, cloud uh, infrastructure. Um, the, uh, the, the, the mobile uh, network standardization body 3GPP uh, has provided a software based solution for all its network functions. Uh, network functions such as uh, application function and uh, network exposure function uh, in EF are key appliances that are hosted by openness in order to influence and steer the traffic uh, that's propagating through the core network towards the edge nodes. In a related context, we are uh, providing recipes for deploying uh, reference cloud native radio access networks uh, with the uh, deterministic uh, orchestration. We will explore more about the uh, VRN deployment scenarios in the in our following slide. Um, at the uh, orchestra uh, orchestration level, uh, openness is shipped with the uh, telemetry aware scheduling and kubectl plugins such as CNCA. So CNCA stands for a core network configuration uh, agent, and it is um, it is primarily used uh, to set up the core network uh, uh, traffic influencing rules for the core network functions. Uh, another kubectl plugin is called FPGA uh, Remote System Update. Uh, so the uh, Remote System Update plugin uh, provides um, a cloud-friendly means to automate the RTL image upgrading for FPGA-based accelerators without um, a truck roll, which reduces the overall uh, operational costs. Um, this uh, RSCU plugin is also integrated with the operator framework for uh, fully autonomous system upgrading. We will uh, cover more uh, as well on the FBJ operator and uh, RSCU in further details uh, shortly. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions, you know, go ahead and submit to the chat window. We'll obviously get to it at the end. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so now uh, that we had an idea uh, about the openness architecture and uh, its extensions uh, for integrating uh, existing uh, network infrastructure, uh, let's ex explore some of the reference deployment scenarios. Um, as you may know, uh, Rakuten uh, recently announced uh, a fully cloud native 5G end-to-end uh, -end network, uh, including uh, VRAN core and apps. Openness uh, provides uh, various foundational elements for this deployment in partnership with commercial partners like Altio Star and uh, Robin IO. Um, and this is a realization of the industry's mission in, uh, to advance the, uh, the public uh, mobile telco network towards uh, a modern uh, software-based architecture um, uh, that all its uh, network functions are cl cloudified and dynamically positioned at various locations. Many of these uh, software defined uh, functions occur in virtualized environments at or uh, near the edge uh, of the network. The uh, radio signal processing stack uh, in, in both LTE and 5G NR is a pipeline of functions that are controlled by signaling derived, uh, derived from the core network 
as the um, radio access network and the core network decompose, uh, it becomes a necessity uh, to distribute uh, their functions across various locations, uh, as shown in the in this diagram. Uh, the uh, the radio axis, the regional, and the uh, the central data center. Openness uh, enables uh, these functions uh, visualization and orchestration across uh, these uh, uh, locations. At the uh, radio axis, openness provisions uh, cloud native inode B and, and G node B workloads on um, uh, deterministic infrastructure because of their time sensitivity needs. Also, uh, radio specific applications such as radio network information and location information services can be deployed side by side in the same openness edge cluster. Openness also uh, enables uh, media centric applications such as uh, immersive media, content delivery networks, and smart city applications to be deployed at uh, the regional data centers. And for the core network, openness provides extensions, uh, extension APIs to for smooth integration and uh, harmonized uh, control and user plane separation and uh, traffic influencing for the LTE and 5, uh, 5G core. In a, a private uh, wireless telco setting, uh, openness enables hosting edge applications and services uh, at the customer premises. These edge applications are managed and orchestrated uh, by a centralized office that could be sitting in the cloud. The various uh, branch sites are connected over uh, a software defined wide area network, uh, SD1 for short. Uh, the, uh, the centralized office uh, is commonly titled as an SD1 controller as shown there at the top uh, right corner. SD1 um, is a software-driven uh, model for the uh, for the one uh, that uh, that instead of uh, routing traffic just based on addresses, it is uh, application-aware, meaning that um, it uses software to more intelligently uh, route uh, or steer steer traffic across the one based on the business requirements for uh, for these applications. SD1 uh, architecture uh, logically uh, separates uh, edge applications and their management functions from the WAN transport services like MPLS, broadband, internet, or the LTE uh, or 5G. Uh, similar to uh, 3GPP, uh, SD1 uh, separates the control uh, management plane uh, uh, from the data plane uh, in the in the context of uh, SD1, uh, data plane is also known as the uh, data forwarding plane. The, uh, the data uh, forwarding plane is, is established over uh, secure tunnels that have been set up between the branch sites while uh, their control is managed by uh, a centralized uh, data center. Uh, multiple uh, access technologies are uh, natively supported by openness-based uh, deployments. Um, so regardless of uh, what access technology the devices uh, at the branch sites would be using, either uh, private mobile LTE or 5G access, Wi-Fi, or even traditional LAN, Therefore, uh, SD1 network functions that are underpinned by the openness infrastructure will be able to provide seamless, ac seamless uh, access to the on-premise uh, edge applications and services. As we discussed earlier, earlier uh, a key part of the cloud native radio access network functionality is the execution of the LTE and 5G physical layer uh, pipeline in a deterministic manner. Um, in, in this reference deployment, we are uh, using the uh, FlixRAN. So FlixRAN is a, a reference layer, uh, layer one the pipeline of 4G inode B uh, and 5G G inode B that is optimized for Intel uh, architecture. Uh, FlixRAN executes a baseband uh, e unit um, so for short, uh, BBU um, uh, and, um, and and BBU threads are uh, at real time, um, and uh, they are uh, given direct access to Ethernet SRIV functions to terminate front hall and mid hall 3GPP traffic. 
Also, they are uh, giving uh, access to uh, forward error correction uh, acceleration queues uh, that are uh, memory mapped and passed through uh, as PCIe uh, ISRA IOV functions. Uh, these uh, forward error correction queues uh, enable uh, accelerating the channel coding uh, acceler acceler operations uh, using uh, the Intel uh, FPGA programmable um, accelerator card. The uh, BBU threads are um, a group of critical execution routines that must be executed on isolated CPU cores. Um, isolated here means that uh, these are the CPU cores that the, the BBU threads are given exclusive access to. So when uh, booting the uh, Linux kernel uh, with the correct set of parameters, uh, the Linux kernel scheduler will take care of prohibiting any processes uh, to be scheduled or any interrupts to be serviced on these isolated ones. Uh, by doing that, then uh, the uh, BBU threads uh, execution is not impaired by any kernel interrupts or uh, context switching. We've uh, used Kubernetes CPU manager and uh, the, the topology manager and the node feature dis discovery to fulfill uh, uh, FlexRAN pod isolation and uh, to provide uh, optimal placement. Also uh, using the SRIOV CNI and the SRIOV FBGA device plugins, the uh, FlexRAN pods are correctly scheduled and provision, uh, provision the hardware resources they need to transceive uh, radio traffic and uh, access the acceleration. So uh, for cloud native radio access network deployment, uh, OpenNIST delivers uh, a well-defined recipe for best performance on general purpose compute. Uh, this recipe defines the optimal real-time kernel setting, the uh, necessary BIOS, uh, BIOS configuration, and the most efficient CPU frequency and power management settings. The uh, Intel FBGA programmable accelerator card, uh, also known as the SmartNIC, plays uh, a key role in accelerating virtualized network functions uh, that in turn increases the overall computing density. The use of FBGA brings the benefits of programmability, uh, reduced time to market, and ease uh, of integration. We use the uh, FPGA to accelerate the LTE and 5G uh, forward error correction operations at layer one of the protocol communication stack. And, the, and that, that communication is one of the uh, most compute intensive operations that are substantially enhanced when, uh, when uh, hardware acceleration is involved. The uh, FPGA SmartNIC uh, integrates two by 25 uh, gigs of network interface card uh, with uh, Intel Area 10 uh, FPGA in a PCIe uh, card form factor. FPGA here uh, is used in the field to accelerate LTE and uh, 5G forward error correction acceleration. Uh, these uh, FBGA accelerator devices are installed at remote sites. So when an uh, RTE uh, RTL uh, firmware uh, up uh, update becomes available, we are deploying a process called RSU. RSU is the shorthand for the remote system update uh, that automates the FBGA flashing uh, using a Kubernetes uh, operator. And um, this uh, process is enabled through a technology known as OPE. Uh, OPE is, uh, is as well as short for the uh, Open Programmable Acceleration Engine. Openness uh, is delivering uh, Kubernetes operators of the FPGA SmartNIC de device that implement autonomous state machines uh, for managing the uh, SRIOV NIC device, uh, uh, the uh, OPE stack, and the forward error correction FPGA device. The forward uh, error correction FPGA operator uh, invokes the FPGA uh, device plugin and uh, de deploys a daemon set that is responsible for configuring the uh, FPGA resources and the uh, hardware queues. Uh, then uh, ex uh, exposes them uh, as SRIOV virtual functions. Uh, these uh, SRIOV virtual functions uh, map um, uh, the uh, forward error uh, correction encode and decode the uh, queues so that uh, later on 
they are passed uh, through to the uh, VRAN ne uh, network functions uh, as shown in this, in this drone. Uh, based on the provided configuration by the user, the FlexRAN network function pods are individually and they exclusively associated with the, with the VFs and accordingly uh, allot allotted uh, access to specific uh, forward error correction uh, uh, queues. Um, and th this, this uh, association and the allocation is done uh, through uh, the SRIOV device plugin that is deployed by the operator. So the, um, the whole process of deploying the necessary device plugins and daemon sets uh, needed by the FBJ, uh, uh, the SRIOV and the queue configuration and the remote system, program, uh, uh, remote system programming are autonomously controlled by the operator that OpenS is delivering uh, for, the, for the smart NIC. So just uh, before uh, leaving the slide, uh, a note I would like to mention about the, the two NICs there uh, shown on the diagram. So uh, these uh, uh, could be used for front hole uh, and uh, mid hole termination, depending on the splitting that's uh, made at the radio signal processing stack and, um, and also based on the ge geographical positioning of the G node B um, elements. Okay, uh, so switching gears a little bit and moving on to uh, a different deployment scenario, uh, which is uh, a bit more media centric. So this one is an essential uh, deployment uh, when developing applications for immersive media uh, and content delivery networks or smart cities. The objective here is to uh, enable onboarding efficient and scalable media analytics and transcoding workloads at the edge uh, for the purpose of reducing the latencies uh, to the end users and um, to ease the pressure on the backbone of the network. With this deployment, um, a video analytics service mesh is provisioned to the openness edge cluster that enables uh, third party applications to define and execute uh, open visual cloud based uh, uh, media analytics uh, uh, and, and graphic, uh, graphics pipelines. Uh, these uh, pipelines are optimized for cloud-native deployments on uh, commercial off-the-shelf off um, uh, x86 platforms. The video analytics service mesh that is currently based on STO and Envoy uh, proxy um, uh, exposes multiple video analytics serving uh, uh, bundles uh, with built-in FFmpeg and GStreamer media, uh, media, media frameworks. And uh, if there is uh, hardware acceleration uh, available, such as the uh, Intel Movidius uh, high density deep learning card, then a correspond a corresponding services are spun up uh, to the mesh and becomes uh, uh, available for, um, for applic application cons consumption. So as, as shown on, on this uh, uh, diagram, uh, there are four uh, service bundles uh, available on the mesh. One bundle is uh, the video analytics serving uh, with GStreamer. Another is with the FFmpeg. And two more are provisioned if HDD, HDDL uh, accelerators are installed in the cluster. Uh, with the existence of the service mesh, the video analytics services uh, are scheduled with the Envoy proxy sidecars uh, that enables the mesh control plane to monitor load balance uh, and scale the services according to the uh, platform workload and um, and also according to the CPU utilization uh, transparently even without uh, impacting the third party consumer applications performance or altering uh, their business logic. Uh, at Intel we've uh, developed the uh, the vision processing unit uh, VPU uh, that couples a uh, highly parallel programmable compute uh, with uh, wor uh, workload specific hardware acceleration in a unique architecture. The uh, VPU technology enables uh, accelerating deep neural network and uh, computer vision based applications uh, on edge serv uh, servers and AI uh, appliances. Intel, uh, Movidius, uh, uh, HDDL, and the uh, Visual Cloud Accelerator card uh, for analytics 
are uh, two vision specific accelerators that we support in openness to inboard uh, a dense and ac accelerator um, um, uh, media analytics and transcoding workloads at the telco network edge. When uh, a media centric deployment is uh, uh, needed, our openness the provisions the Kubernetes uh, VPU device plugin and the HDDL service daemon set on all the nodes um, where these acceleration de devices are installed. The uh, HDDL service uh, daemon set uh, uh, load balances and arbitrates multiple OpenVINO based applications that are deployed on the edge uh, cluster for efficient uh, VPU resource, uh, resource utilization. The visual uh, um, cloud accelerator cart uh, uh, is uh, shipped with an Iris Pro GPU on board, it's specifically designed for pipelines that involve uh, not only uh, analytics, but also transcoding operations. Okay, so uh, how uh, can you get started? In the uh, previous slides, we explored some of the deployment scenarios and uh, their uh, reference applications uh, and network functions. Uh, the edge applications are designed to execute at proximity to where the data is being generated. This is for uh, latency uh, or data locality reasons. Example uh, applications uh, could be video analytics for IoT, um, uh, con content delivery networks or uh, location location information services. Do you have a, a brilliant edge application idea? So please join us um, and uh, contribute your application to the Openness Edge Apps repo uh, that's uh, uh, available on GitHub. If you have a commercial application and you would like to contribute its Helm charts, uh, so please uh, enroll to the uh, Intel Network Builders, uh, Builders program and uh, get your application added to the commercial uh, Edge Applications Hub. The, uh, the Edge repo is welcoming not only applications and services, but also the network functions that, um, that would uh, invigorate the edge of the network and on-premises uh, deployments. So to, uh, to get in touch uh, with our team, uh, please uh, visit uh, our website, uh, www.openness.org for the latest uh, news and useful re resources uh, of white papers, trainings, and uh, podcasts. Our project space is, uh, is uh, um, available on GitHub at uh, github slash open uh, hyphen nest. You can also join uh, our developers ma mailing list uh, to initiate discussions or just uh, just raise uh, some questions that you do may have. And finally, uh, you can find the uh, Edge Apps uh, links uh, at GitHub and uh, and uh, Intel Network Builders uh, at the bottom there. So thanks, thank you, and uh, now I hand it over back to Prakash. Uh, thanks, Amar. Uh, just to summarize, uh, I know we have a few Q&A questions that have come up. We'll try and answer those. But just to summarize, as you've seen with openness, what we have really tried to do is address different types of use cases. You saw use cases around, you know, very telco oriented use cases like 5G, uh, you know, core network, base stations, uh, SD-WAN. But then also, you know, non-telco use cases traditionally like, you know, video analytics and AI and you know CDN and so on. So, uh, what we are hoping to do with openness is ensure that you know if you are looking to deploy, if the telcos are looking to deploy an edge, openness should give a good starting point, right? Because we have made sure that openness is optimized for all these use cases for the um, for the specific edge requirements. So it's a very good starting point uh, to build product. You know, do you know pathfinding, go to market, and so on. And also we've made sure that this is certified. So it's a certified Kubernetes uh, solution as well. Okay, so that's a summary. Um, and uh, Libby, I'll pass it off to you. And I think we are ready for Q&A if you have anything else to say, or we can go to Q&A directly. Awesome, thanks Amar and Prakash. Uh, you know, we have some time for some questions. Be sure that you've dropped them into the Q&A tab um, as opposed to the chat tab. 
and Amr and Prakash, if you want to open that up, you can just start from the top and we'll um, get to as many as we have time for. Absolutely. Um, there are quite a few in the q and I see quite a few questions and in the chat also a few questions. So we'll, um, we'll try and answer as much as possible. So Amr, I'll take a few. And if you want to look at the Q&A questions, if you want to pick a couple that you want to answer, um, go and get started. So I'll pick the first one, which is a great topic. Could you explain what types of applications benefit from this project? So uh, it came up in my uh, summary, uh, which was that um, the types of applications that we are trying to address really go you know, run the gamut, right? In, in terms of what runs in different edge locations. So you know, clearly we're gonna address the 5G use cases, right? So it's gonna be the 5G, you know, uh, virtualized RAN, which is the base station. We're gonna address uh, a user plane function as the other, you know, application. We're gonna address uh, SD-WAN uh, for more of an on-premise. Uh, but also we are really starting to see a lot of, you know, non-traditional or non-telco or non-traditional applications like, uh, video inferencing, right? Because we are seeing that a lot. And video is kind of a, a killer app, right? Uh, with some of these IoT use cases, we are seeing a lot of video inferencing in you know media analytics uh, type type of use cases. So those um, uh, those type of use cases are, 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 are what we are enabling. Okay, so the next question is, um, where does the Kubernetes control plane run? Is it at the core data center or is it uh, in the far edge itself? Uh, it, the answer is it depends. Uh, you can, uh, you, we have seen uh, clusters where you would run the, the, the control plane, uh, the Kubernetes control plane on the same node. Uh, so uh, it is not typical for the control plane to run at a different location, but, uh, it is not uh, too far-fetched, especially in an IoT type scenario. You might uh, you might see scenarios where the node uh, might run in a uh, you know much more smaller constrained environment, especially if it's like multi-node uh, environments, and the class the uh, the control plane might might be you know farther down in the data center. But we don't see that a whole lot because that's quite challenging to implement. So typically, we'll see the We'll see the cluster and the uh, the the, uh, the control plane as well as the nodes kind of running, you know, as, as close to each other um, as possible. Okay, so the next question um, is um, the okay the CNIs that are being developed as part of openness. Um, Will, will they not have a conflict with regular Kubernetes CNI deployment using operator framework? Um, yeah. That's a good question. I'll, I'll try and answer that, Amar, please do chime in. So uh, what we are trying to do with openness is ensure we can enable multiple CNIs, right? So we'll have a default CNI. Uh, right now, the default CNI is a project called KubeOVN, a Cube Oven, uh, primarily because, you know, OVN or Oven is, um, uh, is you know from an SDN perspective, it becomes quite important. But we also support Calico, and uh, 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 and eventually we'll be supporting Cilium. We've got a few other CNIs that uh, that we support as a default because you you may have some user space uh, networking functions that require different CNIs. Uh, so the goal is to ensure they have multiple CNIs uh, that are that are supported. Uh, in this environment. So that's that's kind of a design goal, uh, design goal for openness. Okay. And, uh, um, and also for, for that for that point also, uh, so um, it, we we don't, um, uh, uh, what we are doing is that we are, we are building on top of uh, existing CNIs and uh, then we are providing our own en enhancement or pro improvement, improvements into the data plane there and the CNIs. So there is, there is no conflicts uh, as such. So uh, when, when building uh, operators or even building uh, service meshes, we are building on top of the CNI that is that that was of choice uh, in the deployment when when openness is being uh, 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 set up. Amar, do you want to take any more any of the other questions? There is an interesting question there about the uh, quality of service. Um, so how is quality of service supported in the platform? So this is a, a good question. And uh, for that is, um, so in the case of uh, an LTE or 5G deployment, 
the quality of service has a support there in the in the uh, 3GPP uh, standard, and um, it, it's it's being managed and controlled by the network function that is um, managing this. So in the case of 5G, it's called uh, uh, SMF, so session management function. And uh, similarly as well, if the deployment there involves uh, SD-WAN, so SD-WAN uh, controller takes care of uh, uh, ensuring and fulfilling this quality of service uh, agreements uh, that, uh, that were promised for the, the types of applications. So uh, the short answer for it is the, the quality of service is, uh, is, is managed by the network functions that are deployed on, the, on openness. Uh, there is another one about the FPGA, so let me read it out. Uh, regarding FPGAs, uh, what's the speed up uh, slash latency improvement um, provided by offloading uh, error corrections uh, codes? Um, so for that, what we are doing, um, uh, there, is, uh, uh, there is a project in TBDK, it's called uh, BBDEV, uh, Baseband Wireless uh, uh, Device. And it's taking, uh, uh, this is the one that we are, uh, actually we are uh, integrating uh, in, in, in FlexRAN. And FlexRAN is using this framework to accelerate the um, forward error correction through the FPGA uh, that, uh, and, um, and it is it is showing a, a lot of uh, in enhancement and uh, improvement, especially because uh, this operation is 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 very uh, um, compute intensive. So uh, and it's quite repetitive. So it's taking a lot of CPU power to to do all this computation. So the uh, the FPGA there is is um, uh, uh, real, uh, is easing a lot of this strain on the CPUs and is taking care of doing all this acceleration. There are a couple of questions in the chat window. Um, I don't know, Amar, about those. The first one, uh, is, yeah. Yeah, another another similar one. It's about uh, um, about VPU. So, uh, how much density increase is expected if using the Movidius VPU? So the same idea as well applies to the Movidius VPU. So we are we're able uh, um, of uh, of running. Um, uh, multiple uh, uh, video streams uh, and doing all the processing through the uh, VPUs, and that uh, that of course it's a variant depending on the the type of the uh, uh, acceleration that you are supporting. So we've we've talked about the HDDL and we talked about the BCA. Um, uh, so also um, uh, we have support to the the Movilius stick. So. Um, this when when these hardware accelerations uh, are are available, also we are we are seeing a lot of uh, um, we are, uh, of of capacity that we are accelerating uh, through uh, openness. Um, how how openness components are selected are uh, configured per use case um, we are we are using um, uh, ansible uh, playbooks to um, to do all this uh, uh, openness uh, 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 bring up and installation and there uh, we have what we call uh, flavors or reference architectures so there we are providing some you know uh, pre predefined uh, uh, configurations for the typical or the most common use cases. So, in the case of um, a service mesh uh, or a, a video, uh, a smart city application or a video analytics application, then the key ingredients here that are involved, like uh, would be maybe the service mesh as an ingredient, the uh, the 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 CNI to be used. Uh, also, if you would like to uh, to use um, any type of hardware acceleration. So this type of uh, ingredients or components are enabled, um, uh, turned off or, or turned, uh, turned on or, or turned off in, the, uh, in these uh, uh, flavors or reference architectures that we're providing. 
and also we provide some guidance in order as well if, if you have your own specific use case and you'd like to customize this these flavors so uh, you you have the ability to um you know pick and choose which components you would like to integrate and uh, deploy in the installation um there is uh, another question about any plans to support ptp or i or sync sync e as pods offered um yeah i i don't i don't have straight answer to that so um if you can um uh, send send us an email to the developer uh, developers mailing list uh, uh we we can we can try to find an answer so i can uh, ask around and find an answer for it um okay. do you want to take we have about six minutes left do you want to take another question uh, yes there is a new one came up uh, uh what is the implementation language is there a recommendation on using any particular language or paradigm so the language, uh, the, the main uh, language we are using in an openness uh, uh, itself is, is Go. Um, but um, for the applications uh, or the network functions, it is really up to the um, to the to the uh, application vendor or the network function uh, owner to de decide on, on using uh, their preferred language. So it's um, uh, uh, you can use Go, of course, and uh, but any other languages, of course, are um, uh, are are okay. Um, so because like everything will be uh, put in a container, and these containers will be uh, deployed through Kubernetes, maybe through pods or services or daemon sets. So at the end, they, they these uh, these applications will be uh, packaged or bundled in a contain containers. And even you don't you you can you can even like have your own binaries and put them or ship ship them inside the containers and uh, deploy them on openness. So it is really uh, up to the um, to the vendor uh, or the uh, the developer to decide the, the language they, they would like to use for uh, the edge applications and services. Okay, any other questions before we go? All right. Well, thank you so much, Amr and Prakash, for a great presentation and for answering everyone's questions. Um, if, that's, if that's all y'all have, we can go ahead and wrap up, um, unless there's any other anything else y'all want to add. Um, nothing more. I think uh, thank you for the opportunity, uh, CNCF, and uh, thank you to everybody for attending. Uh, please do check out the website, openness.org, and please do engage. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us today, everyone. The webinar recording and slides will be online later today. And we look forward to seeing you at another CNCF webinar in the future. Everybody have a great day. Thanks, everyone, for Thank listening. You.